I'm going to talk about methane emission. Today we talk uh, very often about methane in India, especially the controversial methane extraction from Tamil Nadu, Nedu Vasal village in Pudukote district and Karaikal. And there is plenty of methane available in Arctic tundra, in Arctic regions where the plenty of ice is. Under the ice, plenty of trees are covered and there are plenty of methane hydrates covered by ice, especially in Siberia. Siberia has enormous amount of methane gas and our people should learn to harness this gas from Arctic tundra and Siberia. Little amount is found in Nedu Vasal uh, village and Karaikal. When you compare uh, Siberian uh, methane hydrates, it is nothing. So I think our people and our scientists, our science and technology should take their machines to Siberia and uh, harness methane gas. Uh, why do they go for a small amount in Tamil Nadu while enormous amount is available in the northern regions, that is in Arctic region? And also there are a lot of uh, places where you can harness methane. It's being wasted right here in our own habitat where we are living. And uh, science and technology should come up with a new uh, technology to harness and uh, limit the wastage of methane in our daily lives. For example, fossil fuel production and distribution, a lot of methane is being wa wasted. We should find out some way to uh, harness the wastage efficiently. And livestock farming, like uh, uh, cow dung, uh, contains enormous amount of methane people should be able to come up with new technological uh, equipment to harness uh, methane which is being wasted every day. And landfills and waste, India is full of landfills and landfill is full of methane. And why don't our politicians and our scientists go to landfill uh, and find methane uh, whatever amount they want? Uh, they should come up with new technology and biomass burning and for agriculture we burn so much of uh, uh, biomass and it produces methane. Why can't we harness that waste and turn into a usable methane? And uh, enormous amount of mountains are being burned in India and uh, methane is produced there and people can collect methane while the mountains are burning and the rice agriculture is another one. Plenty of methane is being released from the ricey, rice paddies and we should be able to come up with a new technology to collect all those wasting methane and biofuels. They emit a lot of methane. Why can't we collect that methane and use it? And uh, methane is available. You don't have to take a big machines and drill uh, one kilometer underneath and pump up all those chemicals and destroy agricultural land. You don't have to do that. Methane is available on the surface of the earth itself. Why can't we do that? So we need to educate our public and scientists uh, in order to harness methane efficiently. Most of the methane comes from the human activity. Since the Industrial Revolution, human sources of methane emissions have been growing. Fossil fuel production and intensive livestock farming have caused the current increase methane levels. Together, these two sources are responsible for 60% of all human methane emissions. Other sources include landfills and waste another 16 percent is there. Biomass burning 11 percent. We can find methane there 
rice agriculture, 9% methane we can harness, as well as biofuels, 4%. So these are the sources <coughs> of um, methane emissions. So one, two, three, four, five, six uh, places you can harness methane efficiently. That is one, fossil fuel production and distribution and use. The second one is livestock farming. The third is landfills and waste. The fourth is biomass burning. The fifth is rice agriculture. The last one is biofuels. So first I'm going to discuss about fossil fuel production, distribution and its use. The largest human sources from the production, distribution and combustion of fossil fuels. This creates 33% of human methane emissions. Methane emissions get produced wherever there are fossil fuels. It gets released whenever fossil fuels get extracted from the earth. Whether it is natural gas, coal or petroleum. More methane gets released during any type of handling, transportation or refinement of fossil fuels. Finally, some methane is also produced during fossil fuel combustion. By using fossil fuels, you contribute to the most important source of methane emissions. Fossil fuel production, distribution and use creates 110 million tons of methane per year. A large part of methane emissions get caused by natural gas. Methane is the main component of natural gas. So leakage throughout the industry releases methane straight into the atmosphere. This includes the extraction, processing and transportation of natural gas. Coal is another important source of methane emissions. In coal formation, pockets of methane get trapped around and within the rock, coal mining related activities, extraction, crushing, distribution, etc., etc., release some of this trapped methane. Methane gets emitted from active underground and surface mines as well as abandoned ones. Oil wells can also have methane deposits that get released during drilling and extraction. The refinement, transportation and storage of oil is also a source of methane emissions. Incomplete combustion of fossil fuels also produces methane emissions. No combustion process is 100% efficient. So when fossil fuel get used to make electricity, heat or power cars, these all produce methane. And the second one is livestock farming. Cow dung is methane. All the waste produced by livestock is a methane. We should come up with some new technology to store uh, this uh, waste of methane. An important source of methane emissions is from enteric fermentation in farm animals. This creates 27% of human methane emissions. Animals like cows, sheep and goats are examples of ruminant animals. During their normal digestion process, they create large amounts of methane. Enteric fermentation occurs because of microorganisms in the stomach of these animals. This creates methane as a byproduct that is either exhaled by the animal or released via flatus or cow dung. Because humans raise these animals for food, their emissions are human related. This is why the meat that we eat every day has a huge impact on total methane emissions. Livestock farming creates 90 million tons of methane per year. Livestock related emissions has grown because of the large growth of livestock populations worldwide. Livestock production has seen large growth since the 1960s with beef production more than doubling during this time. The third is landfills and waste. Enormous amount of methane is available in landfills. Why can't we invent some technology to harness this enormous amount of methane from the landfills and the waste? So another important human source of methane emission is from landfills and waste. 
methane gets generated by the decomposition of solid waste in landfills. This also happens with animals and human waste streams. This accounts for 16% of human methane emissions. Landfills and waste produces 55 million tons of methane per year. Landfills and open garbage dumps are full of organic matter. Our garbage contains things like food scraps, newspapers, cut grass and leaves. Every time new garbage comes in, it gets piled over the old garbage that was already there. The organic matter in our garbage gets trapped in conditions where there is no oxygen. This provides excellent conditions for methane producing microbes. They will break down the waste which produces large amounts of methane emissions. Even after a landfill gets closed, bacteria will continue to decompose the buried waste which will emit methane for years. Wastewater from domestic, municipal and industrial sources can also produce methane emissions. Wastewater can be either released, stored or sent for treatment to remove contaminants. As with landfills, if the decay of organic material in wastewater happens without oxygen, then this will create methane. Livestock farming at even a modest scale will have to manage large amounts of manure daily. This is usually managed by using large waste treatment systems and holding tanks. In many of these systems, methane gets produced because they promote anaerobic conditions. Then comes biomass burning. People burn for agriculture after sugarcane uh, uh, productivity, people burn the leaves of the sugar cane that releases methane. And the mountains in India, people set fire to mountains every year. Our mountains are barren because of this burning. And uh, if we didn't burn our mountains today, all our mountains will be resembling rainforest and they will store water and they will store fodder for our livestock. And unfortunately, there is no education at all. And by burning mountains, we release methane. That gas is wasted in the atmosphere. And we should come up with new technology to store this wastage. So biomass burning causes a large amount of methane emissions. Biomass is material from living or dead organic matter. Incomplete burning of biomass creates methane emissions. Huge amounts can get produced during large-scale burning. This creates 11% of human methane emissions. Large open fires get used by humans to destroy crop waste and clear land for agricultural or other uses. Natural wildfires can contribute to this. But the great majority of biomass burning gets caused by human beings. Biomass burning creates 38 million tons of methane per year. And comes rice agriculture. India is full of it. Rice agriculture produces a lot of methane. You must have, uh, if you're an agriculturist, you would have observed that uh, in the agricultural fields, when you see a lot of bubbles popping up, popping up, popping up, when the sun comes, activity becomes more accelerated. All those bubbles are methane, and we don't have a technology to capture these emissions. And if our scientists can come up with new technology, we can harness methane on the surface of the land. You don't have to drill and go one kilometer to find methane. Methane is available on the surface of the earth. So rice agriculture produces a lot of methane. Uh, another large human source of methane emissions is from rice agriculture. Paddy fields for rice production or man-made wetlands. They have high moisture content or oxygen depletion and have ample organic material. This creates a great environment for methane producing microbes that decompose 
the organic matter. Some of the methane produced gets absorbed by methane consuming microorganisms, but the vast majority gets released into the atmosphere. Due to the swamp-like environment of rice fields, this crop creates 9% of human methane emissions. Rice agriculture creates 31 million tons of methane per year. The last one is about biofuels. Each year, biofuels produce 12 million tons of methane, making it a significant source. Any biomass used to produce energy for domestic or purposes counts as a biofuel. Incomplete biofuel combustion leads to the production of methane. This creates 4% of human methane emissions. An estimated 80% of biofuels get used for domestic cooking, heating, and lighting. Often in open cooking fires, burning wood, agricultural waste, or animal dung, this is the single largest contributor to global biofuel emissions. Almost half of the world's population, about 2.7 billion people, use solid biofuels to cook and heat their homes on a daily basis. Most are poor and live in developing countries. 18% of biofuels get used by low technology enterprises such as brick or tile making kilns, restaurants, etc., etc. The balance of the biofuels get consumed for transportation uses. So as I have discussed, methane is available on the land surface. What is the need to drill and go one kilometer under the earth and destroy the land and destroy the aquifers and destroy the fresh water and collect methane while you can do the same thing on the land surface. So much of methane is available here, right here. Why don't you find a new technology to harness the methane which is already present in the atmosphere? What is the, where is the need to go under the earth? You don't have to go there. The nature provides methane on the land surface. So only we need to see with the heart and with the mind. Today, people, we forgot the Mother Nature's generosity. Mother Nature gives you everything required for human subsistence and existence. Methane is out here in the atmosphere. Please collect the methane and reduce the global warming because methane contributes enormous amount for acceleration of the global warming and climate change. We can collect methane on the land surface and reduce the impact of global warming and climate change. Thank you.